everybody. Welcome to Sacred Insights. Thank you for joining me today. So today is the 1010 portal and we are well into the month of October. So this is spooky season for me. Um, to me, it's the most wonderful time of the year or at least one of the most wonderful times of the year anyway. So in these next few weeks, we're leading up to Halloween or Samhain. Now Samhain is Looks like it would be is spelled Samhain, like S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it is pronounced Samhain, like S-O-W-E-N. People say that there's a, a thinning of the veil between this world and the spirit world during this time. And things are more energetically sensitive. People can be more sensitive to the unseen and untapped worlds. But with it being shadow and spooky season right now, or at least coming into it, today I'm going to chat a little bit about some shadowy subjects like psychic attack and our shadow self. So like shadow work was coined by the psychiatrist Carl Jung, and it refers to the process of understanding and integrating the aspects of ourself that have been repressed due to trauma, um, denial about it due to shame and ignored, which can cause a person to project negative intense emotions onto other people. Um, so that's why shadow work is important because it helps prevent that. So, you know, especially when a person is triggering them, it's easier to be triggered when we have not kind of sat with our shadow side because everybody has that. So usually that is due to no fault of the other person normally. And then the shadow represents the parts of our personality that we have disowned, that we've rejected, such as our insecurities, repressed emotions, negative traits, um, unhealed, disowned traits that can result in sending out psychic attack towards another person. Um, like psychic attack is a spiritual concept and it describes negative or harmful intense energy being directed towards another person's well-being. And it can come from someone who either intentionally or unintentionally projects that negative energy or having attacking thoughts and emotions towards another person. So psychic attack can come from energetic attachments that a person may have, but doesn't realize it a lot of the times. So usually they don't realize it. And negative entities can get in your energy through rips or holes in one's own aura when our frequency is compromised. So that can wreak havoc on our lives, our emotions. It can influence a person's actions. And psychic attack can come from emotional turmoil. It can come from envy, unresolved issues. And so you know, it can be sent through thought, word, or deed. It energetically results in a lot of negative karma for the one sending it and we do reap what we sow. The target of such an energetic attack may start to feel energetically drained, unexplained fear, anxiety, depression. Um, it can cause sleep disturbances, physical fatigue that doesn't have any apparent cause. And this is similar to what is referred to as the evil eye. Now, this concept of the evil eye has roots in Mediterranean countries. It's believed that when someone with ill intention looks at another with ill will, it can cause harm or misfortune to the person who is the recipient of this energy. So now there, this is not a proven phenomenon, of course, but everything is energy, even our thoughts. And when we think negatively of another person speaking with negativity towards like gossip, especially with coupled with emotion, um, we are sending out energy to them. We're sending it out to the universe as well. Now it does come back like a boomerang, but 
we don't always know that that's what's happening because it doesn't look like necessarily say the same thing that we sent out. It can come in another form, um, but eventually it does come back. And it keeps energetic ties to that person with us. And like I work with a lot of different spiritual practices to help protect and cleanse my space. Um, just remember, this is not about instilling any type of fear. You know, it can be dealt with. So please don't fall victim, especially to anybody trying to scam you or telling you that you're cursed or need to pay like a bunch of money for them to remove it. That is not at all what this is about. It's just a matter of understanding and protecting your energy on a daily basis, um, having that energetic hygiene, which is important to have that practice. Um, so if you feel like something has been sent to you or if you pick something up, you can release it, you can cleanse it. And, you know, intention is important. So there's things like prayer or cleansing meditations and like protection mantras, they are great and you can get them on YouTube. Um, also, of course, we say this all the time, but visualizing yourself in a bubble of golden white light and intending that no negative energy can get in and that um, you know, you're sealed off from negativity, but it does allow in love. So it's not like you're blocking out the good too, okay? Um, salt baths are good, and, but crystals are really, really important um, and helping protecting your energy. I wear them as jewelry. Um, if you haven't already noticed, I usually have a lot of it on pretty much every day. And, you know, good pr crystals for protection are a lot of the black crystals. There's black tourmaline, black obsidian, smoky quartz, the black kyanite that looks like a blade. Those are really, really protective. Um, I love bringing in like the high vibrational crystals to like raise our, our frequency. Um, selenite is one of my favorites and it, as is uh, clear quartz. Citrine is also really good for raising your vibration too. Um, but, you know, you can use other tools like meditation of the violet flame to burn away any lower energy. That's what it's for and it does work really well. I've used all of these and they do work really well. So I um, just a quick note, working with the angels is important to, and it can help you with your energy, it can help for protection, especially Archangel Michael for, you know, clearing my space. I do that every day. Um, you can just look up a little short prayer to him online or whatever you're comfortable with. But also um, he is great to work with if you feel fear of any sort. Like if you call him in, you'll notice that and ask him to remove that fear and, you know, help him cleanse all that energy. Um, you'll notice that you actually do feel better. So we are all sovereign beings of light. And but we can be affected at times. You know, our energy sometimes is compromised. Sometimes we're going through things. Sometimes our energy is just really open. Um, especially impasse. And, you know, I've noticed some people say to bring your aura closer into you. Um, I'll do that sometimes, but, you know, sometimes people are just upset and they can send it to you unintentionally. It's just, there's a lot of things that happen with that. And so it is important, again, not to instill any fear, but just to be mindful about cleansing our energy. But, um, you know, doing that's what why shadow work is really good because we are going to be more mindful of our own feelings. Um, you know, when we think about someone or something, if we're triggered, like I was saying, it can go to them like a target, and people don't realize the energy that our thoughts send out, okay, good or bad, especially when we have the intense emotions. So if, if we all have that more of that self-awareness and, you know, everybody at some point feels jealous or envious and 
dealing with those things or dealing with shame and pain and um, reflecting on that and working on it instead of walking around with it within us, we would have more emotionally fulfilling lives, emotionally fulfilling relationships, and just everything would be more balanced. And, um, you know, we would have more love, understanding, and compassion for ourselves as well as others. And it would really help, you know, people be more mindful of their own thoughts, their own feelings towards themselves. Because self-love is really, you know, what it's all about in, in a lot of ways. So that is a big part of spiritual transformation is to embrace both the light and the dark aspects of our personality. And so I pulled a couple of cards and we've got cycles, which is talking about what comes around and goes around. I pulled this after I uh, wrote my notes. So it's just so amazing how spirit works like that because that's talking about the karma. We reap what we sow. And then we've got choices, which your thoughts are like magnets. And that's actually what the book says about on this card, which is so, you know, funny because that's exactly, again, what I was talking about. Um, we did get the forbidden card. So if a door seems closed, it's probably not your door. You know, sometimes the rejection is protection and it can really put us in that, you know, more intense emotion sometimes that we want something and we're, it's almost like we're being rejected from it. So just keep that in mind. It really probably is happening for a reason and that it's okay. And we've got movement, which is talking about success. So that doing these things brings about happiness and success and spirit puts us on the path that is really meant for us. Even if we did not, you know, think that it was gonna be working out in that way, spirit knows what's best for our path and that's gonna bring us the most fulfillment, the most happiness, um, joy and abundance. And to me, that's kind of like when you're on your path, those are beautiful rewards. So with that, I'm gonna close my show. Thank you for joining me. Um, I have videos on TikTok. If you wanna head over there, it's the handle is uh, Mind Body Nourish. And you know, I have uh, my readings on Stan Store, which is stan.store slash medium andrea and then on facebook and instagram is medium andrea bacon and i post collective readings on there um several times a week if you want to go check that out that would be awesome but have a beautiful week have a great spooky season and until then i'll see you next time thank you bye